exterior is lovely and clean. Now I'm going to focus on cleaning, vacuuming my interior. I used to have a food tech teacher and in my classes she would make us clean the sink but when she made us clean the sink she would always say I want to be able to see my face in it and that's how clean I expect it to be and now I will never forget that story so that's how I clean my car okay fun fact it's my dust cloth and tissues, but fun fact, with this glove box, because my brother actually made it using trigonometry. What a nerd. That's pretty cool. It's an auto, currently the radio doesn't work, but it doesn't matter because I have a different radio set up. My dash lights don't work, but it's fine. I just guess how fast I'm going. Um, I'm just gonna vacuum, because it's a bit dirty. Wow, that is a terrible vacuum. Don't forget to put your Crocs in sports mode when you do wash your car. Now this happens a lot. <laughs> it's no biggie. Here we go. So, because this is how far the vacuum reaches and that's where my door is, I'm just going to have to reverse to about here. Let's go. Mrs. Blomfield would really be proud. I can see my face in it. I always joke about it, but literally every time I wash my car, it starts raining. <laughs> After I was starting to put the rain X on my car, it started raining. In a previous video I mentioned that I don't like driving my Mustang when it's very hot, which it is today, but I don't know why. Today's an exception, so I'm just going to go for a cruise and bring you along and try to take some footage because I'll be driving, so it's, you know, a bit awkward. You know, I've also talked about this in a previous video, but this is my air conditioning system. <laughs> Oh, 
I really hope you enjoyed watching that part of the video. Now I thought I would do similar to a Q&A style. I opened up my questions on my Instagram and I basically said, do you have any questions about my Mustang or my car generally that you would like me to answer? So here we go. Okay. <laughs> Um, the first question is, give me a story about the background of my car and why I decided to get the Mustang. So, this dates back to, I think about, oh gosh, I'm, it feels like even, I don't even know what year it is at the moment. <laughs> I do, but, I'm gonna do that again. 2014, 2015. Even when I was much younger, I was highly influenced by the golden era of Hollywood, James Dean, Audrey Hepburn, all of those incredible actors and actresses, and also the style, generally, from that period. I also really love, and it's one of my favorite movies, American Graffiti. Another thing that influenced me quite a lot is Lana Del Rey's music. That's also one of the reasons why that my car is named Lana Del Ney. <laughs> I was really interested and came to really love and appreciate classic Mustangs. At that time, I was also dating my ex-boyfriend who had a Mustang and it was a... I don't know the actual color of it, but it was a pastel blue and it was a coupe. Or a fastback. Gosh, now I can't even remember. Anyway, <laughs> he and his father actually introduced me to the car at first and that's how I started learning about it as well. So it was through first-hand appreciation but also very influenced by that era and I just I love cars with chrome bumpers and things like that generally. So. <laughs> um, advice to anyone who wants to own a classic one day. Essentially what I was saying to answer my previous question can kind of play into this one a little bit. I did not know what it, what the difference was between a coupe and a fastback. Yes, you can laugh at that <laughs> because we all have to start somewhere. Learn as much as you can. Try to do some shopping. See what kind of features you particularly want it to have. An example would be the difference between a coupe and a fastback. If it's something that you currently cannot afford, see if it is something that you can save for. I'd also recommend doing a few test drives to see if you even enjoy or would like or if it's compatible with the way you drive, because something I had to consider was power steering, <laughs> lack thereof. And also I was originally looking at buying a manual and the clutch was extremely heavy. I was very, I was much smaller than I am today. So I found it very difficult to use the clutch and recognizing how much traffic there is in Sydney, I did not feel comfortable going down that avenue. So I decided to get an automatic for that reason. Also, don't be embarrassed if there's something that you want to ask someone to get their honest answer from. Don't be embarrassed to ask the question because we all had to start somewhere. We all have to learn from somewhere and there is always something you can learn from someone else and that someone can learn from you. So there's nothing to be embarrassed of with any of these questions. Like I said, I didn't even know the difference between a coupe and a fastback once upon a time. So, and here I am. <laughs> um, why did I choose Phoenician yellow? Uh, I didn't necessarily choose the colour, but it was very well fitting. My mum calls me sunshine, <laughs> so I thought the pastel yellow was just a gorgeous colour of a car generally. I didn't actually specifically choose the colour. I find it's actually quite difficult maybe where I live to find these cars. I don't think it was as easy as just picking the colour in terms of a plethora of Mustangs to choose from. It was just looking at the ideal car for me in terms of manual auto, what was available in that time, my budget, and how much I was willing to spend on the Mustang. Yeah, so it wasn't actually me choosing just the color. It was looking at a range of things and how, and if that suited me. What, okay, what is it about the Mustang that I love? I probably only recognized how much I loved this classic Mustang until I drove it. The gentleman who sold me his car, he took such good care of it and it is still in quite immaculate condition for such an old car. And he had a, I swear, he, when he handed me the key, I swear he had a little, a tear in his eye. It was just, I felt like it was just very emotional. And I didn't quite understand that until I actually drove it for the very first time myself because for me anyway, it felt almost euphoric and I just really enjoyed it. I mean, it was very difficult at first because it was like, it's quite a large car and there's no power steering. So it felt like I was driving or sailing a boat rather. <laughs> Here I am, I think seven years later, seven years later, 
six years later, eight years later, I don't know. And I still own it and I absolutely love it and it's, for me, it's easy to drive now, so. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh, no, I accidentally closed it. Where was I up to? How to start it in cold mornings. How to start it any morning is probably the same for me, so maybe it's different per car, but I essentially just pump the petrol or the accelerator a few times, maybe more than a few times, and then maybe a couple more times after that. <laughs> if you have a kill switch, make sure that's engaged, and then just start the ignition. I always keep my foot on the brake when I start the ignition because you never know. It's an old car. Is it going to jump? Who knows? I don't even know. So <laughs> that's how I would start it if the engine was cold. I would keep it running for a little bit and I would not over rev. I would just tap it ever so slightly if the RPM isn't as high as I would like. But always keep in mind not to over rev or press it a little bit too hard because it's if it's a cold engine, it's not that it's not good for the car. <laughs> it's not good for the car. <laughs> okay, why did I name my car Lana Del Ney? I think I briefly talked about that, but Lana Del Rey, I love her music, so I just thought it was fitting. Lana Del Rey, Lana Del Ney, Mustang, horse, you get it. <laughs> I get, while I get more questions, I'm going to tell you a funny story that happened to me today. <laughs> so like I mentioned, I have owned my car for about seven years, and <laughs> and I completely forgot to engage the kill switch today. So I was driving and I was at a very busy intersection in Sydney. So I was stopped at a red light and then I recognized a little bit too late because then the car had just stalled. <laughs> yes, so there was, it was busy. People behind me in all of the lanes. So I just waved at the person behind me, pretty much saying sorry, put it back in park, <laughs> well, put the kill switch in, started the engine, um, drive, had brake, everything, and then just went and it was like, skrrr! <laughs> Good times. <laughs> Would I ever consider selling it? I have recently considered this, to be honest. I've wanted a fastback, but at the same time, it doesn't really matter to me. I've just become so attuned to this car. I'm so used to it. So I haven't actually done anything about it. it am I actually going to do that in the next week or so? Probably not. How did you learn how to change your oil, etc.? Well, my dad is a mechanic. So luckily he showed me most of the basics. I also have another funny story about, well, it's not really funny, but it's funny now that I know nothing happened and I'm okay and everyone's okay. <laughs> This happened before I knew I should be checking particularly the brake fluid. <laughs> so I took my car out of the garage and I was reversing and I put the brakes on, as you do. And it was like, so this is, <laughs> this is the metal behind my pedal. And it was like this. I was doing this and my car was not stopping. It, oh. So I was like reversing down my street I'm not even exaggerating, I was going, <laughs> it's not funny, but it is. <laughs> I was reversing down my street, meanwhile I'm doing this to try to brake. I'm like really pressing it down, nothing's happening. My car eventually stops because I turned to kind of not hit. Luckily I didn't hit anything, but it just landed on someone's driveway. So, it, so naturally it just stopped because my car just went like that. It was... A good lesson for me, for sure, because I drove it back forward and then just shoved the handbrake on and put it in park and basically ran to my dad and was like, ah, help! But now I know to check my brake fluid. So. <laughs> uh, I really hope you enjoyed coming along, watching me clean my car, I take it for a little cruise, and I hope you enjoyed this little Q&A. Thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day. Bye!